Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Craig Patterson with DS Sports as always, and here we're going to bring in another boxing video. This time we're not going to focus on just one event like we did with, Rhea, with Andy Ruiz against Anthony Joshua. There's still a lot of stuff going on around that one. But this time we're just going to take a general look at the big events that have happened over the last week or so and what might potentially happen next over the, like whether it be the next uh, two weeks, next week, next six months to a year, whatever. Um, we're just going to go through a lot of things that are going on and across all across all these weight divisions we're going from heavyweights to lightweights to I think even down to super featherweights. So a lot of stuff to go around guys and just remember leave a like on the video, comment anything if there's anything you're not too unsure, if you're anything that you have an opinion about, anything that I should keep an eye on. Um, please let me know and remember subscribe to the channel if you are new it's been um, a bit of a slow burner but thank you for, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel for sticking with the channel and hopefully there will be much more content to come guys as um, things start to progress not only in football, boxing but hopefully in other sports as well I may be dropping a UFC video very soon especially looking after sorry after the UFC 241 main event um, a lot of good stuff happening but anyway guys we're going to go straight into it the biggest news of all I think is the potential it seems like they've announced the rematch between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury one of the fights of 2018 is potentially going to go down February 22nd 2020 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada this is an interesting one, obviously they've got fights coming up, Otto Valen is going to be the next challenger to Tyson Fury's lineal title status um, and obviously Dante Wilder is in talks over a potential re over a rematch with Luis Ortiz as well um, so there's a lot of uncertainty about that day, apparently it might be pushed back to December um, meaning that there might only be two, maybe two and a half months for Wilder to prepare for uh, Tyson Fury again um, but I think the most interesting thing about this one, there's obviously a lot of um, things happening in the WBC heavyweight division. Um, obviously Dillian White won his last fight against Oscar Rivas, but there's some abnormal um, or some adverse findings in a couple of drug tests which were reportedly seen to by the British Boarding Board, the British Boxing Board of Control prior to that fight and there was it deemed to be nothing wrong he was eligible to fight he then passed drug tests both before and after the fight but the WBC have since suspended him and are looking into the matter closely so prior to that after the win White was named mandatory challenger and the interim WBC heavyweight champion of the world but now that looks like it won't be the case and there was a resolution in place because Dillian White was number one for so long I think they were saying over 600 days um, that he would get a mandatory shot by February the 31st next summer sorry next year um, but that obviously isn't the case as Dillian White is suspended and this fight kind of doesn't have too many ob uh, obstacles in its way um, other than the, t the fights that these guys will take on next, it will be, I think, Fury against uh, Valin in the middle of September in Las Vegas, and um, I can't, I, I don't know what the arrangements are with Deontay Wilder's fight against uh, Luis Ortiz, apart from it being in early to mid to, uh, December, so we're here in. Um, so a lot of things that will take place there. Obviously, the first fight was so intriguing. Um, in my view, and in, I think everyone else's view, Fury should be the WBC heavyweight champion. Wasn't to be. The draw was a decision. Um, and I don't actually see how there's going to be anything different in this one. You've, obviously, Fury's a lot more active. He's since beat Tom, Sw Tom Schwartz. And he'll now be facing Otto Valin, who's probably going to be um, the next one to fall. Um, or the next victim on um, Tom, uh, not Tommy Fury of course, uh, Tyson Fury's resume um, 
I'm a little bit unsure about this decision that Wilders take to fight Ortiz. Um, obviously, nothing's too straightforward with um, Deontay Wilder, especially since he's um, for um, Dominic Brazil instead of fighting Joshua in the in the undisputed fight. Um, obviously, from that, um, Joshua went his own way, lost to Ruiz. Um, they obviously, it's, a, it's quite easy to make the undisputed fight now because Wilder and Ruiz are in the same stable They're with PBC and Al Heyman. Um, that doesn't look like that'll happen until if the white suspension's overturned, um, and then Wilder, uh, Dillian White's reinstated. That fight probably wouldn't happen until you're talking winter 2020 because there's going to be a lot of obligations with mandatories that Andy Ruiz was overcome should he be Anthony Joshua and Joshua would have the same obstacles if he won as well so in any undisputed fight it's pretty much on hold for the next 18 months so it's going to be interesting how it's all going to play out obviously the big match up in uh, Saudi Arabia although so we think Andy Ruiz is kind of uh, putting his foot down on that one but nonetheless still as intriguing as ever in the heavyweight division but nonetheless we're going to move down into this uh, two divisions lower this is a very interesting matchup in the light heavyweight division with Artur Bratyev and um, uh, Gvozdik they're going to get it on Gv Gvozdik or I can't remember they're going to get it on in the unification bout in Philadelphia on October 18th that's going to be for the IBF and WBC light heavyweight championships of the world. You've got the other two held by um, Sergei Kovalev and Dmitry Bivol. Uh, uh, Sergei Kovalev is going to be fighting Anthony Yard um, in Russia this weekend for the WBO title. Um, one that would be incredibly, it would, it would be incredibly, it would impact the division greatly should Anthony Yard beat Sergei Kovalev. I know that um, Tunde Jai is, gonna, is uh, speaking a lot um, in Anthony Yard's corner, but um, he was fancy Kovalev to come through that one. But obviously, Yard's a big threat, he's knocked out everyone that he's faced um, 18 and 0, I think, and he's got nothing to lose by going there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but nonetheless. Um, that's the WBO belt, the IBF and WBC will be con contested in Philadelphia on October 18. This is a very interesting one. Two fighters from the ESPN, top ranked stable, Bob Arum. Um, and I think this was probably the most logical fight to make. Obviously, Gavodzic beat um, Adonis Stevenson for the WBC belt. Um, obviously, a lot, is, a lot of things happened to him. It's good to see that I think he's back in good health. Um, perhaps not 100% yet, but obviously he suffered a lot of injuries that night and he was very close to passing on, so thankfully he didn't. He was He's one of the legends of the sport, one of the longest reigning world champions up to that up to that fight when Gavodzic ended up ended up knocking him out so severely. And Artur Batavia, nobody really wants to face him. Like, ever since like, he made... Um, he was part of the card and he fought... Callum Johnson, and I think it was the first of zone card at, at the Wind Trust Arena in Chicago last October, um, and he, I think he's fought once since, um, but certainly, um, yeah, certainly one that has been very highly feared in the light heavyweight division. So this that'll be a really interesting fight. Two killers going at it in the unification fight and two of the belts on the line in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and probably the biggest news here at home is the fact that Billy Joe Saunders has left Frank Warren a Frank Warren amicable, amicable, amicable split with Queensbury Promotions and he has joined up with Eddie Hearn and well it seems like a fairly straightforward decision there's obviously there was a little bit of animosity especially with his father that we then learned in the press conference when they announced the the deal had been signed um, between the Saunders family, Billy Joe, with Eddie Hearn. Um, but it seems like the most logical move, like obviously, there's, there's a lot of fights, especially in the matchroom stable and, of course, in the Dizone stable 
with the likes of Canelo, with Golden Boy on the zone in the US, um, Golovkin's now on the zone. It sounds like he might be joining up a partnership with Eddie Hearn as well, so that's going to be a big one with Triple G and Tom Loeffler on that one as well. I think there's K2. Um, and yeah, and with the likes of Callum Smith at 168 as well, that's super middleweight. We've got a lot of really good fights up there, and you know, they're quite easy to make, especially when you think Callum, Callum Smith and Billy Joe, I think, is a really good one for the early part of next summer. Um, what are they, I mean, they've talked about taking Callum Smith to Anfield for a long time now, ever since he won the belly against George Groves, and um, he's become pretty much the number one super middleweight in the world, defended his title after a nine month layoff against Hassan M. Dam in New York. Um, we're expecting to see Callum Smith at the end of October. Um, and then perhaps once more in December. Um, and we're expecting to see Billy Joel at the end of October, early November himself, potentially looking in the States in one of these cards. I think they've announced uh, the Chicago card for Alexander Usyk. I think that's October 22nd, I could be wrong. Um, so October 25th, it might even be October 18th, I need to double check that one, but I know they've just announced that, that he's going to be going to Chicago. Um, so whether we see Saunders on that card, maybe in a card uh, later on in the States towards the end of the year, it sounds like he's going to the States and I think it's a very good move, one that will hopefully bring a lot of fights for Billy Joe because um, he's needed it and obviously two division WBO champion now and um, yeah it looks like Hound Stable might grow and grow with Huey Fury signed. Um, He'll be fighting on Lomachenko Campbell, we'll talk about it in just a minute. Saunders has just signed, it looks like Golovkin might sign. And, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. It's, it's going to be an interesting time, especially now we're moving to the new season and um, the next couple, of, next couple of months towards the end of 2019. Like I said now, next weekend, August 31st, O2 Arena, Vasily Lomachenko comes to London. What an incredible car this is going to be. Vasil Lomachenko against Luke Campbell for the unified WBC, WBA and WBO um, uh, lightweight championships of the world. We've got the IDF currently occupied by Richard Comey. Um, there's a view to the undisputed fight potentially happening after this fight. Um, but it's... Um, it's an interesting one how this all came about, obviously. Obviously, the WBC was vacated by Mikey Garcia, who decided he wanted to pursue his, to uh, pursue a career at welterweight after he fought um, Errol Spence and was out, out completely outclassed. It kind of doesn't really make sense why he's fighting there, um, why he's going to continue to fight there. But nonetheless, that the WBC belt was belt was vacated, Num uh, Luke Campbell was number one, it looked like he may have been fighting someone like um, Uri Dalaev or Devin Haney or even Teofimo Lopez, but um, on this occasion Lomachenko was ruled to be the challenger in waiting in what is now a free belt unification at the O2 Arena. Um, Brilliant card this is, you've got Huey Fury making his matchroom debut against Alexander Povetkin, what a brilliant fight that's going to be, um, two heavyweight giants obviously, two fighters who have come off recent losses, um, Huey Fury has been back and he's fought twice since his um, loss to Kubrat Pulev in Bulgaria, something that nobody ever done, he went and did it. And then Povetkin obviously hasn't fought since he lost to AJ in Cardiff last September. Um, so that's going to be a really great heavyweight dust up. Uh, Charlie Edwards defending his WBC flyweight title against Jose Aguiar. Jose Martinez Aguiar. Um, Charlie Edwards, a brilliant, brilliant win against Christopher Rosales to win the, to win the title. Defended. Um, on his own show earlier on this summer, he's now def he's now making his second defense um, tonight, uh, next weekend, and then you've got the likes of Joshua Boatze defending his WBO, WBO, sorry WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight Title against Ryan Ford, and then John, John, uh, Joe Cordina defending his British uh, Lightweight Title against Gavin Gwynn. 
And then you got Savannah Marshall, Donald Smith, and Conor Coghill on the card as well. On the pay per view card here in the United Kingdom, and uh, we'll be on the zone as well. I think. It, hmm, actually, is it on the zone? No, it's not on the zone. Sorry, it's not on the zone. It's going to be on ESPN Plus with uh, top rank, of course. Makes a lot of sense, to be fair. So, yeah, brilliant card happening next weekend. Um, a card that's happening this weekend, uh, other than Kovlad Yard, is in Mexico. It is Juan Francisco Estrada, who's making his first defence of his WBC and uh, Ring Magazine Super Flyweight titles after he beat Sri Sakit of Sorunfasai in their rematch earlier on this year. He's going to be defending this title against Beeman. Um, Philip Hergovic, highly anticipated Croatian heavyweight, he's going to be on the card along with Liam Smith, who's going to be making a return on short notice, should we say, he's going to be, he's going to be fighting against Lozano. Um, so that's going to be a really good card down in Mexico there. Um, yeah, that's happening this weekend along with Kovalev Yard, Kovalev Yard in um, oh, uh, Russia, yep, that's what it is. And we're going to move it. Another couple of fights which could potentially be happening. There's been a lot of talk recently, especially from um, Eddie Hearn and also with Leonard Elbe of Mayweather Promotions in a fight, in a unification fight in the Super Featherweight division. It is Tevin Farmer against um, Javonte Davis. There's apparently been talks that Leonard Elbe, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, has made an offer of $2 million to Tevin Farmer to fight in the unification. There's been reports that uh, Tevin Farmer has come back saying that that's an insulting offer and it should be a lot more. Interesting one. This is a fight I think we all need to see. Tevin Farmer started his career off kind of a bit slow but has become a real force um, since then. He's um, defended his world title three times. Um, he defended recently against um, Guillaume Frenoir and before that against John O'Carroll um, and then uh, James Tennyson as well on the very first zone card so he's, he's been very active recently and Javonte Davis has only just recently returned after a long layoff he defended his belt um, very recently as well so it's kind of a fight that needs to happen there's been a lot of talk that Javonte Davis is um, sorry Eddie Hearn has been looking at Javonte Davis as a perhaps co-promotional deal um, to, to get him fighting, get him active on the zone, get him a TV deal, but that hasn't uh, seemed to have been the case. I think offers were made that Mayweather promotions then turned down. So, if this two million is believed to be a, is believed to be the offer, it's a huge offer, um, especially in the lower weight divisions. Like, there's not a lot of fights. There's not a lot of world title, world title fights that are happening for millions. Um, I mean, you could potentially look at Lomachenko, Campbell, that could be um, millions from both sides, but I'm not overly sure on the purses there. Um, so, two million is a big offer, and um, one which will hopefully reach a conclusion very soon as to we'll probably get to see a fight, it will likely be on the zone in the US, probably, and as a result, probably on Sky Sports in the UK as well. So, it'll be a really interesting fight to look out for. But um, yeah, hopefully it's one that will reach a conclusion very, very soon. And finally, one that's very interesting for me as um, obviously a Scotsman and as somebody who's been to the last two of his fights, Josh Taylor and Regis Progre in the w in the World Boxing Super Series final. It looks like a date and venue has been confirmed, but there was a stumbling block as Regis Progre was apparently going to be sent filing a lawsuit against the WBSS and I think Camosa as well, um, Camosa AG, as um, something to do with his funds, something to do with his purses either not being paid or not being enough and um, I think Lou Bella did, I think there was um, rumours that Lou Bella did sign, did file a lawsuit but I think that has been uh, um, played down or perhaps been the case has perhaps been dropped, but nonetheless, I think we're looking at potentially the day of October 26th. It will be in London. Hopefully, it will, sounds like it will be in London, but there's also there's one of these cases where you know a fighter doesn't want to travel to London or travel to a different country. There was obviously this argument with Ruiz Joshua, 
Ruiz doesn't want to travel to the UK, he now doesn't want to travel to Saudi Arabia by the sound of it, and Progre wasn't keen to travel to the UK. This is one that... This is kind of a tough one for Regis Progre to have a leg to stand on. The only way he's going to get out of the UK is to get on neutral ground, but the problem is with the WBSS recently is that neutral ground is not something they've really done well at. Um, this fight definitely won't be in the US. Like, it's not going to be in New Orleans, there's not a chance in hell. Not enough seats were filled for Regis Progre's fights. I think there was, I don't think there was a thousand in New Orleans for his quarter final. Um, I think the semi final was somewhere else, but it still didn't do very well. Whereas Josh Taylor's done, I was there, there was 5,000 at the first one, I think there was 8,000 at the next one. It was a near full house, I mean, they had the top tier cordoned off, but it was an, an 8, 9,000 near sellout. It was, the atmosphere was incredible for that semi final against Ivan Baranchik. Um, and it was a great performance by Josh Taylor then, and Regis Progre has very much um, impressed himself, but like I say, I don't really see how this fight can't take place in the US, and so I can't, I don't see how this fight doesn't take place in the UK, I mean we're talking about London, I think it's probably, I think this isn't a bad move because having it in Glasgow it's going to be a hostile atmosphere in favour of Josh Taylor, Whereas obviously London boxing fans know that, like they it's a huge boxing community. A lot of fans, a lot of fans, a lot of boxing fans in London. Obviously, there's a lot of fights happening at O2. There was Dillian White been there recently, um, so I can see why London's a good opportunity. I think it's the best opportunity. They've just announced the final for the. Um, Bantamweight final, that's going to be in somewhere in Japan, I can't remember the name of it, and um, yeah, obviously we're looking at a new April, nine, nine, 99 times out of 100 going to be winning that thing against Nonito Danea, but it looks like October 26th is going to be the date in London for the super lightweight final between Regis Progre and Josh Taylor, so that's all the topics I kind of have to bring up at the moment. The rematch that potentially could happen between Wilder and Fury at the start of next year. Will it happen? Will it not? It sounds like it's signed and delivered. It's not been fully announced. It probably won't be announced until probably the build up to Wilder's fight, maybe. Um, light heavyweight unification, upcoming unification in um, London, um, other fights going on, other fights that might be happening. Uh, new signings with com uh, promotional deals but there's a lot going on as it always seems to be in boxing there will be a lot of fights coming up very soon hopefully we'll be talking about them a lot very very soon but until then guys thank you for watching the video it's been we've been back with with DS Sports Boxing and we'll hopefully be back very very soon until then guys thank you very much for watching remember to subscribe to the channel like the video and we'll see you guys very very soon